play in this second half. So both teams have their marching orders and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This one taken just inside the 10. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. Let's go! Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. He's got the hook up here on the comebacker, complete. And they'll get 17 yards there. And that'll be good for a Cleveland first. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. Got the guy that has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. fake they'll look to throw he's gonna float this one deep right side and he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete one of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading trying to figure out what they're doing and on that one they had to fly just sending a guy downfield with the in route accompanying it what people call a dagger route trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out in this case though they're not able to get it done yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. Incomplete pass on second down. Let's see what the offense draws up here on third. Here we go. On play action, they'll throw. He's going to go up top again. And incomplete. He can't hang on. Would have been a nice catch. Instead, it brings up a fourth down. And when all else fails as a defender, when you're not there in the coverage, your best friend is exactly what we saw there. A big play shot taken by the offense. Unfortunately, it ended in a big drop. He's going to take another shot here. It's caught at the 10. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. A big play there. 45 yards. And the Browns can grab the lead if they hit the extra point. Wow, talk about a big fourth down conversion for the score defensively. How do you let that happen? Yeah, I think you start with the offense, and you give them credit for going for it, having that type of, well, let's face it, audacity. But defensively, I think you're right on target, partner. There's no way something like that's supposed to happen in that situation. You're supposed to be able to shut that down and get the ball back for your own team. Instead, they give up not just a big play, but a touchdown. And his kick is good. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. 
So bad mistake there by the kicker as the ball goes out of bounds. Back to throw now on first down. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. They completed the screen on the perimeter, but boy, that was textbook defense. Exactly as you're taught to play against a wide receiver screen, and they snuffed it out for a loss of yardage. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Let's go! 319! They're going to look to throw. They're looking for his tight end on the corner. It's complete. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. Okay, when the big guy runs a corner route, you're asking a lot, no matter who's covering him. Doesn't matter whether it's a linebacker or a defensive back. Yeah. He usually has the advantage because of his body type. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Here we go now. They'll set up a throw. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he's going to get this inside the 30. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him? Either fellow receivers or offensive linemen. That makes that play a really nice timing play. And sometimes it can break big. Toss. Try to turn the corner, but they string him out and stop him at the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. There's so many things that go into playing the position of linebacker. Some of them are actually subtle. Doing the drill work that you do all the time in practice and carrying it over to the game. Get rid of blockers and get to the ball carrier, knock him down for a loss. tailback and he'll take this down just shy of the 25 yard line four yards on the pick up there as they get it back to a more manageable third and seven on a second and long it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation i think that goes back to their practice and game planning they've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long distance situation they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down it's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. And this one is right through. And with that, the lead changes hands here in this third quarter. So it's his third field goal now of the ball game, and they have needed his leg because this last one gives them the lead. It's been a back and forth kind of a game, Brandon, but now you've got to tell your defense, hey, we need a stop here so we can let this momentum carry us through to the next drive. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone, and they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Now the Browns offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that, they had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue. Blitz coming and down he goes. They'll wind up losing eight on the sack there, and it's second down. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sack. Quarterback gets hit. They'll 
run it now out of the gun. And they won't fare much better here as he maybe gets back to the line. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. Well, I think we know by now that every run is not going to be broken and get all the way to the end zone. But these short ones still have their value. You can still set up your play action and throw the football. You control the clock because you have the ball and they don't. And often the physicality sets the tempo for the game. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. And at this stage, down in the second half, looks like they just wanted to find a way to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the coordinator is looking at his play sheet and trying to figure out which play will work well. He's trying to figure out how to get the ball to the playmaker that you just described. Looking down at that sheet, you find people plays, not necessarily X's and O's, and that's exactly what they did there. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. They'll come out in the pistol. They go play action here on first down. Deep drop. He's going to fire one deep over the middle. And this is caught. A big play that time for Cleveland. 43 yards. Well, we haven't been shortchanged on offense. Another fun play to watch there on the deep pass. This game has the feel of, what, a, a turkey bowl, a Thanksgiving day. You know, when we get together this year, when the Davises and the Gardens get together, <laughs> that's what our playbook's going to look like, like they're drawing them up in the dirt. And so far, it's working for both of them. And they'll run it here. And he takes this one in for a Brown score. A great effort there. Taking it in. And once again, the Browns are back in front. Well, Brandon, he just followed his nose, and his nose took him to the end zone. But how about the big guys up front giving him at least a stalemate in order to find that space? Yeah, the O-line won the battle in the trenches there, didn't they? The call is to go for one and kick the extra point. And the lead is up to five. Five plays there on that drive. And it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. The Browns' kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. This will be fielded at the eight. And a nice job there as he gets this one up just shy of the 35-yard line at the 34. And now San Diego getting set to go. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. So that throw good for four. It's second down. get a couple as he's across the 40 to the 41. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. An extra defensive back in the game now here for third and four. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Going right side here, and that's complete. And a gain there of 11 yards. So he makes the grab and the chains move forward. Nice job by the offensive line giving them time to complete that first down pass. So the offense has it first and 10. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And nearly picked off there. And it would have been a great time for their first pick. Instead, it's second down. Go. 
So second and ten here. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all on the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. So here we go now. Extra defensive back in there on third and ten. They'll look to throw here. He's going to loft one deep. He's got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Chargers. Their dangerous wide receiver. Already his second touchdown here in this opening weekend. And the Chargers have once again taken the lead. I know we often laugh and sometimes we even exalt the guys who are great trash talkers and give us some really funny lines. But the bottom line is absolute production on the field. His second touchdown of the game and they lead. And now they'll be looking to their defense to preserve that lead. And he's going to be hit and taken down in the backfield. Just nowhere to run that time. And the try for two is snuffed out. And in the third quarter here they were trying to push that to a three point game but instead it'll stay at one. And I'm a big proponent of not chasing points or going for two too early. But in this case, I understand why. You know, if you kick an extra point, you're just up two, yeah. right? So a field goal still puts the other team ahead. So you go for two here and protect the field goal lead. They didn't get it done, though. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shot at the 23-yard line. And here are the Browns now as the offense comes back out onto the field. And that last drive, so effective in the passing game, resulting in the touchdown. Maybe not many people were focused on the trenches. There was good protection there. Excellent protection. So now defensively, you've almost got to get down into those starters blocks like you're a sprinter. Get lower than those guys on offense and find a way to roar through them or around them to get into the face of the pass. Easier said than done, though. Way easier said than done. But they've got to try something because right now they're just cutting them to shreds. When defenses get to the quarterback that quickly, a lot of times it's called a jailbreak. It wasn't quite that fast, but fast enough that he had no time to look downfield and set himself to throw the ball. And as he tried to do that, he was hit, and it forced him into completion. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he is going to lose yardage here. That'll go as a loss of five. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. So third and 15 and an extra defensive back in the game now. Flooding the passing lanes. He's going to go for a big play downfield. He's got a man complete. A gain of 39 that time. And we continue to see another example here of offenses just going for it. And this game has really turned into a receiver's dream and a defender's nightmare because no one's being stopped throwing the ball downfield and points are going on the board. immediately there. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. That was a really nice play to be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got he's to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. And filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he is met at the line of scrimmage and he goes down right there. Only a yard in the pickup there and it'll bring up a third down. The line to gain is the 33 on third down. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. 
He's having a big game through the air, and sometimes those smart decisions just dump it off. That's how you continue to have big games through the air. I agree totally. That's, that's a great analogy, a great way to put it, because he doesn't get too greedy where everything has to be pushed downfield, trying to create big plays that aren't there. You dump it off and take that nice gain, and things add up, and now you have the kind of game he's having. And he'll take this down just shy of the 25-yard line. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it. Thank you. Let's go. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he is going to lose yardage here. He lost four there, and it's third down. The defense won that play so fast that I think if the running back even had time to notice if anyone was there, it was just a blink of an eye, and there was a loss on the play. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. Here we go. Now back to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. We are through three quarters here on NFL Kickoff Weekend. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. This one's still anybody's ball game. It's a one-point difference here as we begin the fourth quarter of play. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. And with that, they will move ahead by two here in the fourth. So the drive here ends with a field goal. And that does give them the lead. But this one is still a long ways from over. And you love to be able to look up at the scoreboard and see that you're out in front. But then you take one look across the field and see that offense is raring to come back out. And you think, I don't know the field goals are going to be enough to get us home. This is fielded a couple yards deep. <laughs> And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. And now San Diego getting set to go. And they're going to need another score. Got one last time, but still down here. When you're playing catch-up, every possession becomes crucial, doesn't it? It's vital. Get back out on the field, punch it in the end zone again. They know it's not easy, but what they do have going for them, they did score the last time. They think they've got a good formula working. And what about the defense? Well, now you just say nowhere to escape, and he goes down. They'll wind up losing eight on the sack there, and it's second down. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. Yeah, blink of an eye. That happened fast and a big sack. to throw. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. Short of the sticks after that completion, and now it's third down for this offense. Three, 39, three, 39. Back to throw here. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he is going to lose yardage here. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. I love the intelligence the defense just showed there. Read their keys, saw the screen developing, Ran to it and smothered it. What a third down stop by them. On is the Chargers punter now. As he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And this one goes angling out of bounds. And it will be spotted inside the 30-yard line. 
And now the Browns coming out on the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up. But they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking. And I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. I know you're trying to wring every yard out of a run, but I think nine yards there is ideal in this situation. Yeah, now next couple plays, you only need one yard. Keep that clock rolling with a lead here in the fourth. Yeah, what you're saying is maybe if it takes you one or two more runs to get the first down, that's extra time, extra plays. Really hurts the team on defense. He'll look to throw. Rush coming, and he's taken down. It'll go in the books as a seven-yard loss on the sack, and it's third down. Partner, the Mike linebacker, the middle linebacker has so many different responsibilities. How excited do you think he was to get home with that blitz? Yeah, he wants a sack. He got it. And the O-line will have to do a better job protecting here on third down after that sack. On play action, they'll throw. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. The Browns send out their punter now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he gets it away, and it's a laser headed for the sidelines. This one angles out of bounds in a good spot in the coffin corner. And they're going to mark this out of the five-yard line. The Browns' defense getting ready. Their stay on the field last time was short-lived with a three and out. See if they can get some more of that. And ordinarily, you want to be on the field playing, right? But three and out? That's almost gold to a defense. Get to the bench, get some rest, turn the ball over to your offense. We'll see what they can do here, see if they can force another three and out. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, it'll be second down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. And space opened up a bit. He's able to take this up past the 10. That second down run, a big help. The seven yards leaves him with just a third and three now. Well, there's an example of patience being rewarded. Ran the ball on first down and got stuffed. Most people would scream, throw the ball here in this situation. They stayed with their roots, stayed with running the football, and they got rewarded. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. Give him six yards, and they do convert on third. Fresh set of downs here. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree. One thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed, picking up the first. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 12 yards there as they move the chains. I think the best offenses love to get the ball to their running backs in open space because they have the ability to make people miss, and they also have the ability to run over people. And if you do that throughout the game, after a while, they might just run through some of those tackles and go a long way. Well, we saw him shed a nice tackle on that play. First down, he'll drop to throw. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. That one will set him back nearly 10 yards here on first down on the sack. 
And a play like that with how far he had to go to make that sack shows how athletic defensive ends have become in the NFL. And not just athletic, this is coached in a big way. Run to the football at all times. How about him never giving up on it and pursuing all the way across the field? A play action fake. They'll look to throw. And pressure coming, and they got him once again. They'll wind up losing 10 on the sack, and it'll lead to a third and long. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Two receivers left, one to the right. Out of the gun now on third down. Looking for his running back, and he's got it. 19 yards is the pick up there, but even with that, they're well short. It's fourth down. And passing yardage-wise, now up over 350 in this game. Pretty nice performance. Definitely that, which usually means you're putting a lot of pressure on guys trying to cover. If you're a defensive back and they put over 350 yards on you, you've had a long day. The key to everything, if you're doing it without throwing interceptions or turning the ball over. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. They got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. And on the ground they go with a running back. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves them with a third and three. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Wide open receiver complete. And they convert on third with a gain of 22. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? That's so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. Play fake here on first down. He's going to rifle one deep left side. And that one falls incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on it at second down. One thing I know from experience is that when the deep ball is thrown and you're the defender, you've got to fight that little bit of panic that emerges. You've got to play the ball really well. It's a 50-50 jump ball play. And guess what? They took a shot. How are you going to win it? And in this case, they managed to get it done. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Looking left side, and it's complete. And all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. Their big-bodied receiver with now three week one touchdowns and the Browns add on to their lead and this is obviously quite a performance and most of the time when we talk about someone putting a team on their back I think we're talking about a, a guy who runs the football in this case it's a guy out wide catching it and he's done exactly that truly leading his team right now towards victory three touchdown catches he's been the headliner now an important extra point here to maybe salt this one away and it is good, and the lead will swell to nine. 
That time, a six-play drive. And it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. And the Chargers coming out of the field now. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's, He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But so, hey, listen, if we got, got to be casualties at times, we're trying to win a game. It appears that the pressure is affecting him today. Normally, he knows exactly when to get rid of the football, but today, because he's been hit a few times, he's getting rid of it a little bit too quickly. Second down here after the incomplete pass. One receiver left, two to the right. Green, 39. Green. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. He'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield, a really nice pickup. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. They'll look to throw here on first down. Looking left sideline, incomplete. It's always tough for the guys throwing the football when they think they've got a completion and the ball's almost there and then someone sneaks a hand or two in and bats it away. Second and ten, he'll look to throw again. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Third down now following the completed pass. throw here and he will find his man on the outside only a pickup of two but that's all they needed for the first time for a break we're back to finish this one off after this so it's charger football as we welcome you back from the two-minute warning and let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Back to throw now on first down. Going to throw right side here, complete. And he's going to be taken down, but not before reaching the 15-yard line. And quickly, they get to the line. They'll set up a throw. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here, this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it, or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it, no one got it. Green, 39, green, They'll look to throw again. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. It's a good gain of 11, sets him up first and goal. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. They'll look to throw here. That's caught at the three. The completion good for three, and it's second down. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. Back to throw again. And he's going to go down. Sacked back at the 13-yard line. He'll wind up losing 10 there, a full 10 yards, so that one hurts. And it brings up third and goal. Hang on now, 
They'll look to throw on third and goal. And this is caught now for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. And there's the touchdown that they needed. So they'll celebrate. But the guys on the sidelines, they've got to stay focused. The onside kick team, they need them to get the ball back. Yeah, part one of the equation done. Now they need to convert and get that onside kick. Extra point attempt to come here. And the lead is down to two. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it ends with the Chargers getting into the end zone. So there is still time, a little over 50 seconds to go, but this becomes a critical onside kick. And this will be recovered by the Browns' hands team, and that should just about write a finish to this one. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% <laughs> of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's going to be... Now the Chargers are going to look up here and signal for a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. They come out here in the eye. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup and get set as we resume action. A nickel back added defensively as they look to stop this third and eight. And they'll go with a ground attack here. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. Now the Chargers offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. They only need a field goal. Obviously, the clock a huge factor. They'll be watching that. What do they need to do here, Charles? Your sequence of plays has to get you out of bounds. Completions, get out of bounds, gain some yardage. Then when the clock hits seven seconds or left, now you've got a decision. Are you in field goal range, or is it Hail Mary time? Because from seven seconds down, you don't want to take a shot that you're going to have another play. We'll see how they handle it. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. And now they're in the hurry up. And now down to 24 seconds after the spike. safety valve here that's complete and brought down but not before reaching the 45 yard line they're going to hurry back to the line now and now he stops it with a spike at eight seconds offense looking to avoid a third and long it's second and ten Surveying the field. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And it's incomplete, but there is still two seconds left in this ballgame. So they'll have one final shot. 
I guess they figure with a guy who is that hot downfield, who knows how to get the ball into the end zone, you throw it up and give him every opportunity, even though that one fell incomplete. Yeah, he's already been in the end zone multiple times, trying to target him again deep there, but unsuccessful. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. And partner, this first week, this first game that we get to call together, so special every year, week one. You had the fly over the big American flag out there before the game, all the hoopla, just having football back, so special. It is an opening day, opening game. There's just nothing like it because you really build to a crescendo. But the best part for us is that crescendo lasts for a while. Opening game here, an entire season. We get into the playoffs, to the Super Bowl. I was really excited. I could barely sleep last night. I can't imagine being a player. So for Cleveland, a win's a win as they eke out the two-point victory to take the season opener. And they'll hit the road next week to take on the Baltimore Ravens. Meanwhile, for San Diego, they obviously fall to 0-1 with the defeat. And they'll get a home date next week against the Kansas City Chiefs. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hard-working men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports.